Hello YouTubers, my name is Matt Riley and today you are going to explore the much anticipated RF 200 to 800, the big dog F 6.3 to 9. Now other photographers and some reviews may make this lens out to be the almighty bird and wildlife lens, the one lens that is less than $10,000 that can be great for everyone. And you may hear something towards the end of this review, my fifth observation after the unboxing, that may just give you a different opinion from what I've heard. Stay tuned and check out what's coming up. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. I'm your host, Matt Riley. And to give you a little context on myself, I grew up in a family that was mainly military, and we grew up with firearms, and were very hunting. I centered family. Uh, we grew up shooting guns. My family, we get our gun first gun when we turn 10 years old, also get our first whiskey, not at the same time as the gun. Commonly, the older brothers facilitate the early drinking, and the parents facilitate in a very safe manner the early firearms. Of course, firearms stay locked in the safe and are under use, under strict supervision. I bring that up because I've throughout growing up, I've seen um, and been on many different hunting experiences and as I get older the more I find I love shooting animals just not with guns with cameras so in that spirit I created a Facebook group called shooting animals with cameras not guns I'll leave a link to the Facebook group down in the description if you want to check it out there's some great posts of bird and animal photography on there if you enjoy shooting animals as much as I do you'll love checking out this new lens uh, and you'll be quite interested in to hear uh, what I may have discovered uh, that I haven't seen anyone else talk about or haven't heard in any of their blogs. So let's get into it. As many of the other reviewers have seen, the first thing that I noticed was the box. Man, this is, whoa, I even fumbled it on the way up. This is a big old box. It is a big one. The box came in a large box, uh, and in that box was this box, and in this box is another box. So it's a box and a box and a box uh, in which you dive through the final box and you will find the lens. So love the packaging. The next thing after the box that I realized is it is so big, but wow, it is actually light. It is much lighter than I anticipated. Um, there are some additional things on this that I do enjoy uh, on the lens themselves. Uh, there is little hooks right here uh, that you can hook up a strap to. It actually comes with a strap in the box as well. I personally shoot nature and birds mostly handheld. Uh, there is a great setup uh, from a YouTuber called Whistling Wings Photography. It has a monopod that mounts to a chest rig. It's kind of like a flagpole holster a chest rig for any of those um, color bearers or flag bearers. I myself was one throughout Boy Scouts and Eagle Scouts, so I'm very familiar with that type of holster great ingenuity of thinking putting that on a monopod and having the camera mounted on there. Um, so I have not purchased it yet. I'm checking it out. Thank you Whistling Wings Photography for doing what you continue to do and spread your awesomeness throughout YouTube. The next thing that I commonly do as I get into new lenses is I give this puppy a twist and I really feel what it's like to twist this guy out all the way from 200 to 800. And my first observation is wow it is tight. So I do know that there was a ring on the bottom that is meant to tighten and loosen the ability to go from 200 to 800. And what I found out, it is tight on the loosest setting possible. I'm, even when it is all the way meant to be loose, it still will not fall naturally. Unlike some of the other long lenses that I have had in the past and still have, I'm like the uh, 100 to 500 that also has a very similar ring on it to make it either loose or tight. And when that one is loose, the lens commonly will slip and fall on its own because it's so loose. Now that may change as we use this more and as this gets more field use, uh, but right off the bat, I did feel as tight. Not necessarily a bad thing, just an observation that I noticed and uh, I might actually like it. I I'm not too sure. I it has been somewhat cumbersome when the lens I'm on the uh, 100 to 500 is slipping down on its own uh, and I constantly have to go to that tightening ring. So I, I might enjoy it being a little bit tighter. The next thing I noticed was the texture and the white coating. Now this is not an L series lens, so it is not a red ring Canon lens. There's no red ring here, it's actually a gray ring. And um, this is considered not to be, uh, I believe I may say this right here, weatherproof. Uh, it is, or I'm sorry, it is not weather resistant, it is weatherproof. Essentially what that means is don't take a swimming, not that you take any of your lenses swimming, uh, but in heavy rain, you might be considered. Uh, you might consider not taking it out in the heavy rain 
or having some sort of Gore-Tex or other protection to keep some of the moisture off of it. Um, it does seem to be uh, like a Cerakote or Duracoat protection on it. It does seem very nice. I probably will personally end up wrapping it into uh, with some sort of lens coat. I personally like to wrap them because I like hiding the white. Uh, I do like it being a little bit dark because the Canon uh, white lens is very familiar uh, and I just personally like it a little bit darker. Now here's the unexpected delivery that I really uh, found quite unique. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it exactly uh, as it is represented in real life, but this thing is loud. What I mean by loud is when I turn on the lens in the body, and right now it's on the uh, Canon R7, I also have the R6, which is filming this right now. Uh, you can actually hear an auditory noise to the lens enough to when you're quiet, uh, it's quite loud in my opinion. Uh, it actually shocked me and I called Canon to see if it was potential a, a manufacturer defect or I got a lemon, uh, everything you know is possible, nothing's off the table. Uh, Canon, when I called them surprisingly, uh, couldn't really help me because they didn't even have the lens, Canon USA didn't. Uh, so they essentially advised me to hang tight onto it. Uh, asked me if it was functional, it is, it fully works fine from the little testing I've done around the house today and, and outside. So it does shoot normal, uh, but I can feel it on and hear it on as well. Uh, that's something I haven't really experienced uh, with these other lenses. Uh, the, uh, the Canon rep did say it is supposed to be one of the quietest motors out there, so it really shouldn't be making a noise. I did purchase this from Adorama, I called them as well. Um, they said something similar, that they don't know the lens is so new, none of their techs know. The best advice that I got was to hang tight until after the first of the year, potentially after that. Uh, it did come with a 90-day warranty per the manufacturer. I believe Canon's um, extended warranty plan that you can purchase is default. Uh, you have 90 days to buy it, and it's from the date of purchase. Uh, for one year after. So essentially, you're grandfathered for 90 days into the protection plan. I'm gonna go out and shoot the heck out of this and see how it really turns out. I'm gonna have a blast having this range of 200 to 800. I'm really interested to hear if anyone else has heard of the noise or got feedback on the noise in the lens body. So please leave a comment in below if you have heard of this being a louder noise, noisier lens, not noise in producing noisy photographs, but actually you can hear the thing. And I'm gonna try to hook up a mic a little bit closer to this uh, so you can hear the noise as well. But it is soft, but noticeable. All right, there probably is a better way to record the audio uh, that this lens is producing, although um, this is just the way that I'm doing it because it's quick, it's easy, and well, it's easy for me, and this is the current setup I have. Um, so if you see, I've got a mic set up uh, right here to the camera, um, and this mic is currently recording. I'm on the I'm R6. So I'm, I wanted you to see how I turned this lens on and off um, so you can really hear where the noise is coming from, and I'll use the audio that's coming from the camera. I'm in conjunction with this video. So that was on and off once. I'm going to do that one more time. Just for the scientific method, we'll do it one more time because three means it's real. So there you have it, the noise coming from the 200 to 800. Um, like I said, I'm still gonna keep it, still gonna check it out, uh, but now you know what you're gonna get into, and I'll let you know if this ends up being some sort of defect in the one that I got. Please comment if it is not, and it's, you're getting the same thing if you have this lens. Overall, I'm very happy with the lens. For under $2,000, you're getting heck of a dynamic range here, and I, I wouldn't go back and, and change it thus far. I go out there and shoot some animals with cameras, it's more environmentally friendly, and it's unlimited ammo. Be great out there, and if you can't be great, be careful. More specifically, be full of care. Thank you. Have a great one.